Hello gamers, welcome back, or in case you are new here, I'm NKZL. In this video I want to talk about a topic that I have been thinking about for a little while. When it comes to MMORPGs, I started to believe that external publishers are not needed, and in the vast majority of cases, they are and have been detrimental to the quality of the game. A little reminder before we begin, if you like my content and are interested in more, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. With that out of the way, let's continue. I think the first thing we have to do is explain what the role of a publisher is in the industry. In simple terms, we can divide a live service game like an MMO into two major components, the development side of the game and the publishers of the game. When looking at the publishing component, this is usually in charge of support, advertising, gathering feedback, and often enough they have a major impact on the monetization and localization, especially when talking about external publishers. The job developers do, making the game and creating an enjoyable experience is much more impactful on the success of the game. But the publishing department or external company doing a poor job can ruin all the work the developers do. The opposite can also be true. In the case where the publishing component is very competent, they can elevate the work developers do. To delve deeper into this topic, we should take a closer look at the responsibilities of the publisher, and here I would like to start with an element that I think is extremely underrated and overlooked until the moment you need it. And when that happens, it might result in completely ruining your experience or creating a memory that you will remember for years to come. I am talking about the support element. For me personally, one of the very small experiences that left a very lasting impact happened years back when BDO was published by Kakao Games. I contacted support to move a limited costume from one character to another, which was something they would do a few times a year. At the end of the support ticket, I asked if they could also give me one extra event item, since that was all I needed to obtain one of the rewards. I never expected them to actually grant the secondary request. Much to my surprise, they actually did. And after that, I asked around, and I heard that they have done this quite a few times for other people that were in a similar situation. Of course, they also told me that this is not something they will do every time, but since I have never requested something like this before, it would be a shame for me to miss out on the rewards, so they will grant this request. I share this experience to showcase how mostly insignificant action from support can leave a lasting impression on someone. I'm sure some of you might have similar experiences with GMC in WoW or other MMOs in the past. I say in the past because nowadays very few MMOs have support services that actually do anything. On the opposite side of the coin, when you are experiencing a problem, you contact support, and if they end up being slow to respond, and even when they do respond they do not fix your problem, it can very easily leave a lasting negative impression that might even make someone quit the game. Sadly, I think the quality of support services is one of the first things that gets axed when a company is trying to save money. Connected to the support element, it is also the community one, since it is often handled by the same people. Sadly, I'm not even sure if this is worth mentioning, since this is an element that we only see in a very diminished capacity nowadays. Sometimes they release very cool cinematic videos that are even cool from the perspective of those of us that don't play said games. For me that would be the case with League of Legends. I really like their cinematics, but I do not like their game. And there are even a few MMORPGs, like Black Desert, that still have GMs in-game, that host in-game events, and stuff like that. But, in general, the community element has been reduced to a Discord or a forum and social media accounts. I think fostering a community is one of the responsibilities of the publisher, and sadly, it is very rarely achieved. Those of you that have not played MMOs in the mid and early 2000s will not know what you are missing, but personally, I have seen this element almost completely disappear from today's games, and I think it is a shame. Looking back on a lot of games I played in the past, the days when companies were fostering a community and being positively involved in it left some lasting memories. I don't entirely blame companies for it. With all the woke and cancel culture, 
that is going around nowadays, it is much safer for companies to simply not engage in the community element. The next important responsibility of a publisher is gathering feedback. I'm sure some of you automatically thought of forum posts, reviews and other stuff found on social outlets. While that is part of it, most of the feedback is in the form of metadata. What content people choose to do, what content they don't, after what content they stop playing, and what content makes them come back and continue playing, what classes or weapons they choose to use, and so on. I'm sure you get the gist of it. This information is extremely important, and being able to gather and relay this information properly to the development department can result in a game improving over the years or not. If we take a look at the MMORPGs that foster a dedicated player base and stood the test of time, we can see the vast majority of them are those that manage to put this information to good use. Another quite important responsibility of the publisher is localization. This involves translating the game in different languages and voice acting both NPC dialogues and cutscenes. You might care or not about the story and the RPG elements of MMORPGs, but the reality is that if we take a look at almost all the successful MMORPGs of today, they all have a strong emphasis on these RPG elements. So it can be concluded that these RPG elements are highly important to the MMORPG crowd. Don't get me wrong, this is not the sole responsibility of the publisher, but I believe they are usually the one responsible if this element fails. We had multiple games ported from the Eastern market where they have been praised for their stories just to be considered some of the worst questing experiences here. Just in recent years, we had Sword of Legends Online, the story of which follows an extremely popular IP in China and has been praised there for their story. When it came here, it ended up being a total failure. Some of it can be considered a cultural difference, but personally I think the poor quality of the voice acting, the mismatched and half-translated cutscenes and quests were the main reason for this. The last element that the publisher is usually partially, and in some cases even entirely responsible for, is monetization. They often work with developers to create incentives for people to spend. That being said, monetization is a very complex subject on its own, and it is not the focus of this video, so we are not going to delve deeper into it. I just wanted to mention it, as it is one of the responsibilities of the publisher. I went through these responsibilities to be able to form a picture of what a publisher is usually in charge of and to show how impactful these elements can be on a game. These elements are clearly needed. However, if we go back to what I said in the beginning, when those in charge of these elements are an external company, in my experience, they never match up to the quality provided by an internal department. The main reason, in my opinion, is that in general salespeople are in charge of publishing and when they end up being the ones in charge of the whole thing, the product starts to matter less and less. This is something that Steve Jobs said, and it fully applies here. If we take a look at the whole industry, in the vast majority of cases where games become successful, the ones in charge are developers and not salespeople. Don't misunderstand me, salespeople are very important, but the product must always come first. A very good salesman might be able to sell sand in the desert once or twice, but when we are talking about a live service game, the future needs to always be taken into consideration and so the product needs to be of the best quality possible. Creating a good product also makes it much easier to sell. I think we talked theoretically for long enough, so it's time to look at practical examples. If you are actively following MMORPGs in the past few years, you probably already know that Amazon's Game Studio has signed a contract with NCSoft and with Bandai Namco to publish Throne and Liberty and Blue Protocol to the global market. These two games have been unnecessarily delayed and are yet to release globally. At the very least, in the case of Throne and Liberty, we know full well that as far as the developers are concerned, the game is ready for release. They have said so themselves in an interview. We can even look at Lost Ark. 
which is a game AGS already published. Even two years after publishing it, it has still not caught up to the Korean version. When comparing the global to the Korean version, it is worse in every single aspect, including pay to win. You might blame this on Amazon being a soulless corporation, but we can just look at any publisher and we can see the same things apply. Gameforge published Sword of Legends Online, which ended up flopping here in the West and eventually shutting down. Again, it was worse than the original version in every single aspect. We can even take a case where the publisher achieves some level of success, like Kakao Games publishing Black Desert Online. Their performance pales in comparison to when Pearl Abyss, the developers of the game, took over. The game has seen massive improvements in the server infrastructure, monetization, quality of life, and we have even caught up to the Korean version. All this resulted in Black Desert being one of the most popular MMORPGs of today, instead of being just a mediocre success. We can go on with publishers like My.com and many others, and we can see they always do the same thing. They publish a game, turn it into a pay-to-win mess, and then leave it on live support or even shut it down. The next example that I want to give is the case where Digital Extremes try to be an external publisher for Wayfinder. Digital Extremes is the company behind Warframe. They have taken Warframe from being a game that very few people played to becoming a titan in the industry, and even this company, which is highly regarded, has failed to be a good publisher. I think looking at all this information and all these examples, we can easily conclude that external publishers will even, in the best of cases, provide a lesser product than internal publishers. Personally, I don't expect things to change, at least not overnight. But I do think, and I hope, that companies realize that having competent developers in charge will not only result in them making a more enjoyable and successful game, but also will make them more money in the long run. I hope part of this will mean we will be seeing less external publishers, and this process being handled internally, which will allow for more and better communication between departments and will result in less cases of cooperation with incompetent publishers. As for us gamers, it is always good to know where we stand and what expectations we should set for ourselves. With that in mind, I think we should expect a lesser product when external publishers are involved. That's all for this video. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and all that jazz if you feel like it. See you in the next one, gamers! Thank you.